Wavetail is a third-person action-adventure game. The visuals really stood out to me, and the water theme is intriguing. Well, Wavetail doesn't disappoint. Now, it's not perfect, but I really enjoyed playing this game. Wavetail is definitely casual, very easy for someone who plays a lot of games, especially considering the generous movement mechanics. Still, none of that stopped me from having fun, and I will recommend this game at the end of the video, spoiler alert. You play as Sigrid, who lives on an island with her grandmother. A fog surrounds everything in this world, and it's dangerous to go into. So you're trapped inside a very small area in this world. It's safe inside your small area, especially on your island with the lighthouse that keeps the fog at bay. Now, this world has been through a lot. There was a war with the dirty paws, and now almost all land is underwater. Keep in mind, the water is also dangerous, so don't go for a swim in it, your grandmother says. The current situation is worse than that because the dirty paws are back. This has everyone in a tizzy. A lot of the history of this world happened before you are able, or your character, is able to remember but your grandma fills you in while you're playing. This world and setting is one of the favorite pieces of this game, and I'm enjoying every moment I learn something new. You can also find journal entries scattered throughout the world for even more details. So there's some exploring, but mostly this is a linear game. Here's a little snippet of grandma giving you some history of this world. Once you've passed the old cidery. What's a cidery? Ah, your mother actually worked there for a couple of summers before she... They pressed apples from the Kipson farm. Made the best cider around here. A sweetness that set your mouth a tingling. Apples? Are those the orange ones? No, Shrimpy. That's an orange. So what... Kinda sad she doesn't even know what an apple is in this world. Truly, a lot happened in this world, and these people are barely hanging on. That's the story, but let's talk about the best mechanics in the game. The wave riding mechanics. You have a shadow following you around. It doesn't matter. You're able to surf with your feet touching the water, and you can glide across it at pretty fast speeds, jump very high, and it looks great. It's so much fun to dive into the water and see your character glide across the water in a very smooth way. It's just a fantastic way to travel. Anyway, the game has a ton of platforming. That's what you'll be doing throughout most of the game. You're going to be trying to climb a tower to collect a spark or hit a switch. It's also the main way you'll be interacting with bosses. The platforming is good. There's a wide variety of abilities to get around, so the game is constantly changing how you might climb up a tower. The net you're carrying allows you to swoop over to platforms or throw yourself into a booster that will fly you through the air so you can get to other platforms. There's just so many different ways to get around, and the game is also generous in how you can stand on different buildings. You can stand on pretty much whatever you want in this game, and I found alternative ways to get to my objective. The movement mechanics are so generous with a double jump and a jump and swing the net around your head so you can glide. It does drop off steeply after a while, but never dumps you straight out of the sky. There's a lot to like here. The environments are rich. They always look very nice and small attention to details in the world. So I really enjoyed all the platforming, especially the boss platforming to defeat them was more interesting than attacking them straight on. However, speaking of combat, it is by far the weakest part of this game. I will find an enemy, attack them head on, which staggers them so they won't attack you back, and you can pretty much defeat them easily. There's only two attack types in this game, a straight regular attack and then a charge attack that you swing around you. 
the enemies are not very thoughtful in the way that they attack, making them very easy to handle, and you have a lot of health, so I never died from combat. The point is, if you don't like combat, I wouldn't let that scare you away from the game. You can either run past the enemies or just keep tapping the button until they're gone. It seems like they felt combat was a necessary addition to help them amplify the dangerous themes of the gloom or fog, and not because it was good mechanically. As I said, it's the weakest part of the game, and after a while, I absolutely started avoiding it as much as I could. Moving on to side quests, which you can see in the upper left-hand side of the screen, I'm supposed to be finding Clara's stethoscope, or if you come across other people in the game, you can save them from the gloom, like Jack here. He's going to ask you for an axe to go find his axe. These are fine quests, but nothing that exciting. They add a very little amount of world building, especially compared to the journal or your grandmother. These items do appear to be more hidden since I didn't come across them without searching for them. I stopped searching for them. It wasn't really worth it to find them to get a little bit of text. All right, I do have to mention some issues that I came across while playing Wavetail, and keep in mind I did play it before release. There was one time I lost my grandmother and I couldn't progress the story, or it would have progressed, but in a weird way, so I didn't understand I had to restart, but it was very early on, did not spoil it too much for me. Then my biggest problem is probably the camera. It's a little unwieldy, sometimes it feels too close to the character, but it's not the end of the world, I just wanted to mention it a little bit. And there's also some other weird issues in the game. I think it boils down to this, that this is an indie game that pushed what they could complete and sometimes bugs show up. Is that a big deal? Not for me. I will take this kind of indie game with a few rough edges that push the exciting parts of the game than something watered down that is a more simplistic game. That's my opinion. Nothing that I came across bothered me at all. I've played much worse that was quote unquote unplayable, and this is extremely playable with no major issues. Overall, Wavetail is great. It has excellent movement mechanics that are really fun and make the platforming exciting. The riding along the ocean water and gliding and swooping over the waves. Oh, just an absolute joy. Wavetail is constantly beautiful to look at. I really enjoyed this art style. The notes from your grandmother about what happened in this world and learning about it is intriguing. There's so many aspects of this slightly rough-edged indie game that I thoroughly enjoyed. I cannot recommend this game highly enough. Now, I don't want to hype it up too much. It's not the best game ever made, but a very solid indie game title. Thanks for watching. We're getting close to the end of the year and you could throw me a gift by subscribing to the channel or following my Steam Curator link in the description below. Bye.